everybody! Welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name's Veronica, and um, this is my channel where I talk about all things books, my favorite books, book reviews, books that I have read, books that I want to read. Um, yeah, just my booktube channel. So today, what we're going to be doing is talking all about Akatar. Now, this series had me in a very deep chokehold for about a month and a half, so I have a lot to say about it. Um, there will be spoilers. This is your warning now. If you have not read these books and plan to read them, click off now. Come back after you've read them, but click off because I do not want to ruin this story for you. Um, yeah, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. So, let's get into the first book. The first book, A Court of Thorns and Roses, Agatar. This book, okay. So, a lot of people... I knew about the story when I started reading the series, when I picked this book up. At the store, I knew a little bit about the story. I knew about the Tamlin Reese sort of thing. So when I was reading this book, I always had the idea of Reese being the end game for Feyre because I had seen spoilers online. Totally fine. I just knew while I was reading this book that I was not a fan of Tamlin, even when he was like being kind of sweet in this book, because he was, and he was a good character in the book until Under the Mountain when they were doing Feyre's Trials. I think that the writing in these books, it's almost magic itself. Like there's not really any other way to describe it other than it being just pure magic. The way that she writes, the way that she weaves these characters, <sighs> It's something that I haven't experienced. It it really made me feel like I was experiencing the magic as Feyre was experiencing it. Like for the first time ever seeing it through these brand new eyes. That is how I felt when I was reading this book. Like these books, I'm like, I feel emotionally connected to them. And I'm, I, I feel like I have a bit of a hole in my heart finishing a Court of Silver Flames last night. That's the last one, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, I knew right from the beginning that I loved Feyre. I loved the strength that she portrayed in all of her endeavors and everything that she did. Um, in this book, though, I wasn't a fan of the sisters. Even Elaine, because I know that she's the sweet, pretty one. I wasn't a fan of either of them because of Feyre having to pick up the slack and deal with all of the problems that they were having at the time and I wasn't a fan of the father in this one either. I really liked the dynamic between Feyre, Tamlin, and Lucian. That was really cute and I liked their friendship. Um, I thought that that was very well done, like a, a nice camaraderie between Tamlin and Lucian and then Feyre being Lucian's friend as well. I liked that and I thought that that was really well done. I don't know that I have much I want to critique about this book because it was really well written. The characters developed pretty well during the book. The plot was laid out very nicely. It had a nice mix of casualty to the main plot, which ended up being Under the Mountain. But, and then the sprinkling of Resand being in this book. Oh my god. When I at is it I can't I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but Callan May, I I almost cried when he showed up. I literally was so so excited and I loved that. And then underneath the mountain, I loved how he protected her, even in his twisted way that it seemed like he wasn't really protecting her, but he was. <sighs> All of it was so good. It was so good. This book really and truly 
not reignited my passion for reading, but changed my passion for reading because I have not experienced a love for a story like this since I read Harry Potter when I was a kid. And that still is an obsession of mine and I love it. I go back to those books and movies all the time, but this changed the way that I read books and how I write as well. It, it was honestly life altering this book and this series. I don't know what else to say about it other than that is, it was so good. And I would rate this a five out of five stars. I really don't think that there's anything that I can think of in this book mind you, I read this book a month and a half ago, that I would change at all because it was just, it was just perfect to me. <sighs> a Court of Mist and Fury has my entire heart beating inside of it. I don't ever want my heart back. This book was so good. I, this is my favorite book that I've ever read in my entire life. I'm not sure if any book is ever gonna top it. Silver Flames came close, very close. They're like right there together. But this book, the way that I can't even I can't even think about this book without like tearing up because I just loved it so much. So in this book, it's after Under the Mountain, Feyre is set to marry Tamlin, but she still has her bargain with Reese that they made Under the Mountain to heal her, um, that she would go there one week out of the month, I think it was. Anyway, so they have that. So she's set to marry Tamlin and is in absolute shambles about everything that happened under the mountain. The fact that she's now Faye because she was turned in Akatar. Her whole life changed completely and crumbled around her and Tamlin became extremely possessive and protective of her and their relationship. Um, that, that was like really rooted my, um, distaste for Tamlin because of course that's the point but he just oh. the way that she did it it was she flipped him so well that it was it mimicked a very toxic relationship where the beginning is beautiful and lovely and then like just a switch flips and the person is completely differently acting changed their entire personality and so that was really well done I really liked the way that that sort of followed her in a relatable fashion of a toxic relationship in real life. So then Reese saves her from the wedding when she's saying no in her head, like she's she's changing her mind on the spot. She feels the change in her mind. And so Reese saves her and calls in his bargain um, and takes her to the night court. Oh, I just love it so much. <laughs> so, while there, she's resentful. She's still trying to be in favor of Tamlin. She's still fighting for their relationship. She still wants to be part of his life and is fighting against Reese every step of the way. Obviously, that eventually changes. Tamlin traps her in the house um, and she goes ballistic. Um, Moore and Reese come and save her. And then that's when you really start to get a feel for the changes that Feyre needed to have and the strength that she needed to build in herself. And so she does that throughout this book. She builds a huge, she has a huge ch character change. Um, and she builds a lot of strength. She works with her skills. She trains. She does everything that she needs to do to become 
strong and let go of the past and let the past not be what dictates her, dictates her life anymore, all while preparing to fight in an imminent war. <sighs> this book was so well done. Um, I loved Reese's confession. I loved when they were realized that they were mates. I love that they are mates. I love all of the pieces that came together to make this book. This book had me in a very, very deep chokehold to get through it because I was so obsessed with this book. It was truly one of the best books I've ever read in my entire life. And then in the end when um, they're at Highburn and all of the trauma happens of her sisters being turned. That was when I started having sympathy for the sisters because of course that is a very traumatic thing to go through. So yeah, that was, that was the turning point for the sisters. I hated that Lucian announced that Elaine was his mate at within 30 seconds of seeing her. Obviously, I think that that comes back to his the love that he had being killed by his father and he didn't want to lose another one of his the loves of his life even though maybe they're not in love they're just mates but yeah I think that the trickery of Feyre seemed a little bit not forced because it like obviously it was believable to Tamlin but I could see why Lucian saw through it a little bit but then to have the announcement of her being high lady of the night court them having had their mating ceremony and all of those things oh my god it was so good it was so good there wasn't much that I didn't like about this book that wasn't intentional to not like the book like that part of the book obviously there are has to be parts that you're like, oh, I hated that that happened, but it happened for a reason. It was meant to happen. And so I think that that was a lot of what this book was. I loved seeing the inner circle sort of all come together and rally around Feyre and let her into the group without forcing her into the group. That was really, like, I like that part of the inner circle and how they just are open to the newcomers but aren't forceful so i really like that about them this book i rated of course five out of five because it was the best book i've ever read in my entire life it was so good so good so good it's just it's just magic on pages like it's just she's such a brilliant writer such an inspiration to writers uh, across the board I think even if you're not a fantasy writer even if you're not a romance writer the way that she articulates her characters and the plot through the characters it's admirable to the highest extent she is such a skilled artist in this craft okay the next book in the series of course is A Court of Wings and Ruin and we start out in the spring court again where Feyre is being deceiving to Tamlin and Lucian. Um, Tamlin more so, and I think that that partly has to do with Tamlin is a little bit preoccupied with Highburn. Um, so anyway, that deceit comes and goes through and then we end up back in the night court. That scene, when they meet back, like when they see each other again, shattered my bones that surround my heart like I felt my chest crack open I was so happy that they were reunited like I felt the longing that they felt for each other and that's so so hard to write so that was very special to get to read that and then of course going through the plotting of the war and determining what sorts of attacks needed to be made and all of the things like that very war political kind of vibes in this book um and then seeing the sisters kind of come through their trauma and stuff like that so that was really interesting as well um I 
really liked the meeting of all the high lords that was really cool i liked the the visual of the the big pond with the circle of chairs and really all of the very powerful people all in one room so that was really cool um a scene that i really liked the war was interesting to read about because i had never really read um action in that sort of sort of way um i think it was very well done it showed little tidbits of cassian and nesta and their budding relationship um and it showed a lot of nesta of course of why she ends up getting the next book of all of her power and all of that um the scene this book is close in next to a court of miss and fury because of one of the scenes in this book because of the scene where their father shows up on the boats riding nesta's boat or in nesta's boat i sobbed and sobbed and sobbed and sobbed and sobbed for the entirety of reading about their father and then of course the father dying which was terribly tragic and really upsetting to read about but that was like my favorite part of the entire book was that their father being there so that was really cool um yeah i really like this book again five stars it just it just hit the spot they all have hit the spot so well like they're even with them being huge massive books this one i think is like seven six seven hundred and no way 699 pages 700 pages um it didn't feel like that the whole time granted it felt like I had read a full book by the time I got to halfway through but even still with the amount of action packed into the book it uh worked very well um yeah so this was a great book I really loved it um yeah five stars Okay, so next we're going to quickly talk about A Court of Rust and Starlight. So this book to me really was just like a glorified Christmas book. Um, I loved it. It was great. Um, I only rated it four stars. Only because it felt a little bit like... What's the point? Like it didn't really have a plot that really like did anything other than tie the stories, tie up loose ends for Feyre and Reese, and then open up ends for Nesta and Cassian. So that was, I liked that part of it, but it definitely wasn't my favorite of the series. I liked the depiction of Solstice. I really liked that we got to see into what a typical Solstice looks like for them. I love the snowball fighting because that's adorable. And I liked the gift giving and everyone was very thoughtful with their gifts. So I thought that that was really cool. And I loved getting to see Farah enjoy painting again. Because I know that that was, that was obviously a lot for her to get back into. So I really liked seeing that aspect of it. And then seeing Nesta sort of falling down the drain that we end up seeing in Silver Flames. But yeah, this book was, it was great. It just, like the writing was perfect. Um... It just sort of fell flat because it was just a holiday book, but I thought it was cute nonetheless. Um, and I think my favorite scene from this book was the gift giving and just like them being all together for Solstice. So that was really cute. Finally, the last book in the series, A Court of Silver Flames, Nesta and Cassian's story. So I think for the first three, maybe four books, um, it felt like a love story, but this book felt like Nesta was saving herself. Like it felt like the, the strength of Nesta was the main part where in the other books it felt a little bit like, yes, the the growth that Feyre went through every time that she had to go through growth, that was super, super important in her character, but the romance kind of stood out a little bit 
more in their story, in Reese and Farrah's story. So for Nessa and Cassian, the romance, obviously Nessa is not really a romance person. So it makes sense why it's more about her becoming strong-willed and confident and working through the trauma that she's been through and all of the pain and suffering that she's either inflicted or been inflicted upon that was super 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 nice to read so i think that this one does match up with a court of mist and fury on like my favorite scale but for different reasons i really loved the romance the love story of a court of mist and fury but for this book i loved the strength and determination of nesta throughout the whole book i thought that she was amazing i love reading about her story I related to the growth process and watching her grow and learning each step through it and how like coping mechanisms and ways to deal with these problems and all of the things and I thought it was amazing because by the end of it she was a warrior and that was so so cool to see. I had no idea when I picked up this book what Nesta's story was going to be. I assumed that her and Cassian were going to end up together but I had no idea that it was going to be this strong and powerful. I think that of all of the books this one showcased the strong female character the most granted i have not read any other um sjm books i plan to but i started with akatar um and i know that that's a common theme throughout her books is the strong female lead so i thought that that was really really prevalent in this book and i loved it so much and it was so powerful to watch her go through all of the issues that she went through and then come out on top and be able to accept that they were mates and oh it was just so good. I think from this book my favorite scene would be all three of the girls, Nesta, Emery and Gwyn, going and scaling the mountain in the right. I think that that was very very special especially for Emery and Gwen. I think that that was it was very moving and I assume that we'll see more of them in future books. I know that some of them are in interconnected so I'm hoping that we'll see more of them because I really loved those characters. I loved the female lead strength and I thought that it was really lovely that Nesta developed her own um court of friends rather than just falling right into the same inner circle that um, Feyre had fallen into. Not that I think that she wouldn't fit in, I just think that rather than sitting on somebody else's progress and friendships and relationships, it was nice to see Nesta go and make her own with girls that, women that, with women that were important to her story. So I really loved that. I think that this book was fantastically written. I binged the last 200 300 pages in a day or two because i was just so so obsessed i loved the book i loved the writing i loved the characters i loved cassian's patience with all of the training women i loved every aspect of this book this book was it was a really really powerful book and i loved it very very much i also rated this book a five stars um this book, I also think that there's nothing that I could say about this book that would change, or that anybody could say about this book that would change my opinion. I think that that happens. I think that that happens to be the case for all of the series. I really and truly am obsessed, addicted, and in love with these books. I have recommended them to so many people. It's not even funny. I've got my sister on them. She bought the whole book set. I got my brother on them. He's reading them now. I've been trying to convince anybody who will listen to me about these books because they have stolen my entire heart oh oh my god i almost forgot the smut in this book was so hot it was so good i really really loved that part of the book it was very steamy i think that the, it was obviously the best of the whole series and i loved seeing nesta in that way and i loved seeing her and Cassian together. That was really, it was really quite nice to read. I loved reading about them. 
their story was lovely. Um, I just love them and I love the way that he treated her and the respect that they gave each other and yeah, I really did love it. I think that it was a great, great book. And I like that it was never come out, like, Cassie never came out and said, you're my mate, until it was like they had already both figured it out in their own heads. And then later on he said something. But I think that that was really important to let her come to that on her own rather than force her into that situation. But yeah, I really loved this book. So, 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 so good just melted my heart like I really and truly am obsessed with these books and I oh I'll never get over them I'll be rereading them all I'm sure I just don't know when because I have literally 300 books on my DBR right now like almost every single book on this shelf I have not read so there's two books on this shelf that I've read and that's just one of my shelves. All of the rest of them are the same. But I love it. Anyway, that was my Akatar review of all of the books. I would love to hear in the comments what your favorite book was from the series, why you loved it, um, who your favorite character was. My last question, and the one that I am very, very interested to know from everybody else is, do you think that Tamlin deserves a redemption arc? Do you think that after the way that he treated everybody after all throughout the books, how he acted deserves redemption? I think he does. I don't know how they're going to make that happen. I think that he does though. I really do because in the first book he was lovely. Um, I think that he has a lot to work through, but I think that he deserves it as well. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. If you wanted to follow me on all of my social medias, the links are down below in the description. I really appreciate all the support that I've been getting on all of my pages. Um, and I can't wait to talk more about books with you. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, bye.